I beat you out in the market all day long. I can do this all day. Yeah, I know. If you want to go up against me on negotiating a property that you want to buy, I'm going to get it every single time. I will beat you over and over and over again because there are things that I do and there are things that I have that you don't. Now, here's the crazy part. There's things that you could do that would make you serious competition for me. And if you want to be a real contender in the real estate market, you need to understand this. One, one shot, not a beat you before it's gone. Do you remember 2020? We had the pandemic slamming us right in the face. We had supply chain issues and all of a sudden, people were being told, you can't work in our office anymore. You gotta work from home. Do me a favor, please. Get out of here. Get out of here, man. And parents were going crazy like, I do not wanna work out of my home. I need a different home if I'm expected to work from home. And as a result, there was this flurry in the market. We went from missing three million homes to over six million homes because there was a new demand that the market had never seen historically ever in its life. And what that did is that drove the price of real estate through the roof. And it meant bidding wars through 2021 and part of 2022. And it meant that when a home came on the market, you didn't just have to compete against a couple of people that were interested in buying it. You were sometimes competing against 20 people on investment grade real estate where I've got to get deep discounts and properties with high performance and high ROIs. I would sometimes bid against literally over 100 people and it was tough. So I had to do some things to stand out from the crowd. Now, the reason why I'm telling you this is because 2024 and 2025, we're going to see the same type of bidding wars. As rates come down and prices skyrocket, we're going to see more homes hit the market, but people are going to be battling for them. And there's going to be way more losers than there are winners. And here's the question. How do you be one of the rare winners that actually got the house competing against all the other people that didn't get the house? Loser, you're a loser. Are you feeling sorry for yourself? Well, you should be, because you are dirt. You make me sick, you big baby. So when a seller is receiving offers, there's two things that impact them more than anything else. Number one, are they getting the price that they want? And number two, how likely is the person to be able to get their financing in place? When it comes to price, you can only beat everyone out if you're really, really fast. I literally get sometimes acceptance on a lower offer because I'm so fast that the market doesn't have a chance to compete against me. But when it's not that, I've got to win by strength of character. Why am I more likely to actually follow through on the deal and get the bank financing if financing is a part of the deal. And my friend, it comes down to a mortgage pre-approval. Not a pre-qualification. I'm talking about a pre-approval, a step above. Some lenders will offer a quick mortgage pre-qualification process online. This is not the same as a pre-approval. A pre-qual is a lightweight lift. Basically, it requires very little paperwork. It doesn't even involve a credit check. It's a rough idea of basically where you stand financially. It's a good start, but not a lot of people will take it serious, including the realtor that is advising the seller, hey, don't go with that offer. They're just pre-qualified. A mortgage pre-approval is a much better gauge of your home buying qualifications. A pre-approval letter is a golden ticket to house hunting because real estate agents and home sellers will know that you're a more serious buyer. Basically, you've been approved with the bank. They've asked you to submit pay stubs, financial information, and they're basically saying, we have a high degree of certainty. In fact, we've even approved this person. We will get them a mortgage. As interest rates come down, as prices go up, and we start seeing more bidding wars, the one thing that you can do to stand out from everyone else is making sure that your offer identifies you as having been pre-approved. You can even name the bank, and more importantly, the bank should give you a letter that says, this person is pre-approved to buy a house up to this amount. When they get that letter with your offer, they're basically saying, okay, the bank is vouching for this person. The bank has received some of their financial information. The bank says they're gonna get a loan. So if we like the price, we're gonna take that offer. Okay, Chris, so how does a pre-approval actually work? First of all, you're gonna go to a mortgage broker more than likely that works with a number of different banks. And they're basically gonna say, let's start building a financial file to look at your financial health to see which banks will actually do a lending program with you. They're gonna have you gather requested documentation. They're gonna have you submit pay stubs to verify your monthly income. They're gonna take a look at your tax returns for the last couple of years. They're gonna request some bank statements, maybe some other financial documents, and they're gonna pull your credit score. And basically between looking at your credit score, your income and your debts, they can essentially say, based on your financial situation, you're pre-approved with this amount from these different banks with these different interest rates. And if you're smart, you're gonna take the lowest interest rate from the bank that is giving you pre-approval, and more than likely, that's who's gonna supply your mortgage. By the way, did you know that 86% of sellers prefer going with someone that is pre-approved and not just pre-qualified? That's a stat that don't lie. 
So here's the good news. Most people aren't taking that vital step. There's so many realtors that are hungry for business that instead of saying, hey, let's slow down and see if you're pre-approved, they're instead gonna say, hey, let's get a house under contract and then we'll worry about the banking stuff later. And their business suffers because they didn't slow down. They weren't able to sell their client on, hey, let's go through a pre-approval process first. This is a huge advantage when you realize how many offers might be coming in on a house that you're interested in. Now, I'm a professional investor. Like, I gotta play the same game as you, but I have to play it at a different level. When 20 2020 and 2021 hit, guess what I had to do? As a professional investor to produce a 25 or a 35% annual ROI, basically having your money double every two or three years, I don't just buy any house in any neighborhood. There's 324 markets that make up the United States and I'm only interested in the top five markets. And in those markets, I have to vet every single deal that's on the market and figure out what offer I can place on the home to make it a winning deal. So to hit the ROIs, there's a price that I can't go above, which means I have to do something to make sure that I stand out from everyone else. And here's what it is. It's an all cash offer. It's closing within seven days and it's no concessions. It basically says, I'm going to buy the house as is. It's not going to be subject to inspection, appraisal. I'm so confident. Just say yes to me and you'll receive the money in your account in seven days. Now that's what I had to do to beat out 20, 30, 50, or a hundred offers on some of these deals. And the same principle applies to you. Your golden ticket really is that pre-approval. Now it is possible that in going through the pre-approval process that you get declined. This is not a bad thing. It would be way worse to get emotionally attached to a home that you want to move your family and kids and everything into the perfect neighborhood, the schooling and find out we actually can't get qualified. This almost happened on my very first house. Take a lesson from the less wise. If we back up 20 years ago when I bought my very first property, I was pre-qualified, but I was not pre-approved. Basically, I had a bank give me a chintzy letter that says, sure, we'll get you a loan. I went, I found the house that I wanted. I got the deal accepted. And then I went back to the bank and they said, sorry, declined. It's not going to work. I went to the next bank with less time to get the loan in place, declined. I went to the third bank with less than a week. Fortunately, I was able to secure a pre-approval and then the loan actually did go through. My life would have been so different if I hadn't actually gotten a loan on my very first property that ended up buying my second property that led to my third property that led to my 25th property, my 100th property, and so on and on and on. The other thing I want you to be aware of is that 72% of people that actually get a pre-approval, they stop. They say, I got approved with the bank. I'm good to go. You should be shopping for multiple pre-approvals because one bank is going to give you a better rate than the other one. They might actually charge you less for putting the loan in place. Why is that important to you? Because over the life of the loan, that could literally save you tens and tens and tens of thousands of dollars. Now today, Chris Crone's giving you advice for bidding on that next home and winning. But understand from the investor's angle, it's a different playbook. I am not super rate conscious. I would rather have more houses with slightly higher interest rates than fewer houses with lower interest rates. Now today, one angle of the advice I've given you is what you need to do to make sure that your next purchase is really smart. But if you're a subscriber on my channel and you follow me because you're a real estate investor or you know you're going to be, then you need a different game plan because we look at the world financially altogether different. More houses equals more winning. So you never get so caught up on qualifying for your next house that you lose sight of where you'll be with 10 houses. Remember, financial freedom takes about 20 homes in your personal portfolio to no longer need a job, which means you're only 20 homes away from living life on your terms the way that you want. And here's my question for you. Beyond pre-approval, do you have a game plan for not just buying that next house, but for becoming financially independent? If you don't, I'm going to give you one for free. In fact, if you click the link below, you have an opportunity to request a free game plan. Get with me and members of my team. And what I promise is that I will show you if I woke up in your shoes today with your credit score, good or bad, with your income, high or low, with your financial situation, good debts, bad debts, I'm going to show you how I would make my first million dollars investing in real estate. If you're already a millionaire, I'll show you how to make your next $10 million. That game plan provides you perspective for life to help you tweak a couple of small decisions that leads to financial landslide winnings at the end of the game. If you want to be financially free, click the link below, request a free game plan, and let me show you step-by-step -step what I would do if I were you to become financially free. 2024 is a very different real estate landscape. It's starting to look a little bit more like 2020 and you need a different strategy for how you play this game. And if you want my playbook on how to win in 2024, the real estate game, click right here, watch this video, let me show you.